In this video I would like to bring you closer to my passion for inexpensive CNC machines. There are countless variants on the market from very cheap and very simple to slightly more expensive and more robust looking. The machines I'm referring to use an unmodified garbless firmware running on an 80 Mhz 328P microprocessor. The effortable price, the well documented microcontroller and the open source firmware all make these devices a great platform for learning machine control and performing hardware or software hacks. A cheap machine can be a bit awful out of the box, but if you know how to handle it properly, you can achieve very good results with such a tool. Three such CNC machines can be seen here. The simplest variant is called T8 and has a working range of 12 times 10 times 4 cm. The axes are driven by bipolar stepper motors via 8mm spindles. All axes are guided along steel rods with the help of steel bushes. The main weak points of the construction are... The milling spindle consists of a simple DC motor with a tool holder attached to the output shaft. The lever from the tool tip to the lower motor bearing is gigantic for milling spindles, which inevitably results in a poor runout. The mechanics of a CNC is never ideally rigid and therefore bends under load. The 8mm round rods of the X axis can be deflected relatively easily by hand. The very unfavorable because unnecessary long lever ratios of the mechanics increase the undesirable effects of backlash and bending. The spindles have a fixed and a loose end. The fixed end must of course allow for rotation of the spindle, but must be mounted on the frame with as little backlash as possible. The ball bearings shown here have noticeable backlash and the spindle mount is not perfectly centric. The lack of precision of the spindle attachment at the fixed end is compensated for at the loose end with a flexible coupling to the drive motor. This coupling allows the spindle to deviate crosswise... ...as well as along the spindle axis. However, it is very stiff when transferring rotary motion. The drive spindles work with brass nuts. These have noticeable backlash. In order to compensate for this, a certain amount of preload is applied to the main nut on the other two CNC machines via a coil spring and a second press nut. With that, the axis is pressed against the windings of the spindle with the corresponding force. This preload concept is widespread in the field of CNC machines, but only works as long as the forces during operation of the machine remain below the force given by the preload. Furthermore, there is, the higher the preload, the higher the undesired friction caused by the mechanism. With the CNC machines shown here, the preload is rather low, so that it is only effective as long as the lateral forces during milling are rather low too. Milling plastic with the V-bit works quite well with these machines. Shown here is the 3018 Pro. The 3018 in the device name refers to the area of the workpiece that can be machined with this CNC, namely 30 times 18 centimeters. The basic mechanical principles shown in the T8 including the unfavorable lever ratios are almost the same. However, the DC motor is more powerful... ...the tool holder is manufactured more precisely, which results in a slightly better run out... ...and the round steel rods for guidance have a larger diameter of 12mm. So the mechanics of this CNC is generally a bit better, 
but still far from perfect. Instead of steel bushings, linear ball bearings are used to guide the axes along the rods. Sounds better, but it really isn't as inexpensive machines also use inexpensive ball bearings that have noticeable backlash perpendicular to the direction of travel. In conjunction with the unfavorable long lever ratios, the backlash at the tooltip is not really any better than with the T8. However, the more rigid frame at least mean that the machine bends less overall under load. The Robo also belongs to the very common class of 3018 machines. In terms of mechanics, the main difference to the two previous machines is that the table with the workpiece is not moved during processing. The weak points are more or less the same. You shouldn't expect to be able to mill metal with these CNC machines, but engrave plastic... ...or mill wood can be done with a precision that is quite impressive. When milling wood, as shown here, the workpiece is processed line by line and only from left to right. Thus, the direction of force on the cutter and the mechanics is always the same, so that the backlash has almost no visible influence on the quality of the result. You can teach and learn a lot about the software path from the digital template to the finished workpiece, because this path is anything but click and done. If you want to get more out of your CNC, you have to modify or hack it. In this video I leave out the mechanical hacks and only briefly talk about the electronics and the software. The T8 is the hacker friendliest in this respect because the main circuit board consists of an Arduino Uno clone and a CNC shield with the corresponding motor controls on top. The stepper drivers are attached to the shield and can be replaced if necessary. It couldn't be better. Furthermore, all pins of the ATmega are easy to reach via the shield, which makes hacks in electronics extremely easy to carry out. The firmware can be customized at will via the Arduino IDE. The two 3018 machines have mainboards on which all components are soldered. Furthermore, not all GPIOs of the microprocessor are available through pins on the board. The good thing is that the microprocessor in both cases is an ATmega328P, the same processor that the Arduino Uno uses. Furthermore, the conversion from USB to the serial interface of the ATmega takes place via chips of the type CH34, with which these ports can also be programmed via the Arduino IDE. With the 3018 Robo, this works without any adjustments, the port is recognized as an Arduino Uno. The 3018 Pro works with a transmission rate of 70600 baud, which is why a configuration file has to be adjusted in order to be able to program the machine as an Arduino Uno. The changes in the board's text file are explained on my pages. Garble is open source, so you can customize the firmware as you like or switch back to the original firmware at any time. Or just write something completely new, from scratch, because that's the most intensive way to learn. Each of the machines shown here has three stepper motors, a DC motor and limit switches. So you have a fully assembled and soldered hardware for computer or mechanical engineering lessons, with which you can demonstrate how to move the world via GPIOs. 
what to consider when modifying the firmware of these machines and how to recognize which mainboards are suitable for this, there's more on this on my Homo Fazians pages. There you will also find examples of what can be done with such machines. I had already disassembled the T8 for a robot arm, but in the meantime this has been cannibalized again and the components will soon be used for another project. Anyone who would like to support me in my efforts to teach physical computing is welcome to use the donate button on my pages. Many thanks to everyone who has already sent me a monetary motivation boost. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.